You ever been in a conversation where somebody used a word or maybe made a statement that you didn't quite understand? Most of the time when that happens, we'll try to put it in the context of the overall conversation and a lot of times we can make sense of it, but there are those times where you just kind of have to say, stop, wait a minute, what did you just say and what does that mean? I think the apostles had a moment like that with Jesus Christ. At the time, they were on a boat crossing the Sea of Galilee, and they noticed they'd forgotten their lunch. And so the Bible tells us they're looking around for bread. And as they're doing that, we read something really important, but could be easily missed, and it's found in Mark chapter 8 and verse 15. As they're looking for their bread, the Bible says that Jesus charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of of Herod. Now, that was a very powerful statement. The Bible says Jesus charged them, and that's an aggressive term. He was, he was leading them with strong, stable leadership. He told them in this verse to take heed, to beware. It seems as though one or the other of those words would have been enough, but, but he said this is very important. And it's as though Jesus here is saying, listen, I know you're looking for bread right now, but there's something else you need to be on the lookout for. You need to be on the lookout for the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod and those who follow him. Now we have to wonder, what is meant by leaven? And of course, leaven is an old word for the word we use today, yeast. And we know that leaven in the Bible is a type of sin. Just as leaven can take over a lump of dough and turn it into something different, sin, if left unchecked in our lives, it can, it can take us over. And so Jesus said, I want you to be aware of, of sin in some specific areas. First of all, he mentioned the Pharisees. Well, we know the Pharisees were the religious leaders of the day. They were experts in the Mosaic law. Uh, they were kind of attorneys of religion. And for that reason, they were really good at wiggling out of areas of the law they didn't want to keep themselves. They put burdens on other people they didn't want to bear. And they followed more the traditions of their fathers rather than the clear teaching of the Word of God. That was somewhat of the way they approach life. I don't think it's a stretch to say that we could make a parallel to the time in which we're living of, of those who would emphasize rules more than a relationship. Maybe we could call it a, a dead and dry fundamentalism that's, that's all about that aspect of Christianity to the neglect of the grace of God. It would be those who look at the Christian life as though it's an equation or a science. Do this, don't do that, and boom, you're superior to others. You're a highly spiritual person. Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And then he mentioned the leaven of Herod and of those who followed him. Well, what do we know about Herod? He was a pragmatist in the extreme. You see, Herod's mantra in life was, hey, don't rock the boat. Let's go along to get along, and he wanted to follow the prevailing ideas of the culture of the day. And of course, in his context, that meant going along with whatever Rome wanted, keep them on his good side. That was the way he lived. Well, we can make a comparison or an analogy in our day of those who are so keenly interested uh, on staying in the majority of the prevailing thought in our culture today that they'll just cave in on major Bible doctrines. Maybe there's a sin that our culture embraces, and rather than standing for righteousness, they'll decide, let's ignore that, or maybe let's create a man-made loophole, take a verse out of context so that we can justify that sin. Pragmatism. Well, friends, I want you to understand, Jesus said that we need to take heed and we need to beware that there's a sin of, of that dead legalistic side uh, approaching the Lord that way, and there's also a sin in that pragmatic side that will compromise on truth that has been given to us by God. You know, there's some things we know to be true. Truth without grace can be very hard and harsh. Of course, grace without truth, it's, it's degrading. It leads nowhere good. But I know someone who is completely grace and completely truth. His name is Jesus Christ. And our call in life is to follow him. And so as we follow that path set apart by Jesus Christ, let's understand there's a ditch on either side of the road. And if we want to stay on the path Jesus has for us, we need to keep our eyes on him and follow him in faith.